As I always say, Mondays are normally the most boring day starting the week. But here in DWZ, we intend to keep your Mondays fun and exciting. As you know, luckily for you, if you guys are big fans of the Japanese wrestling scene, well, you're just in luck. That's what this episode is all about. We're going to be doing reviews from four different Japanese events from three different promotions. The first one is, of course, Hana Kimura Memorial Show that took place recently on May 23rd. As you know, we celebrate the life of Hana Kimura, who sadly um, left this earth, but her memory always remain in our hearts and on our memories. And then we move on, of course, with two back-to-back -back events by none other than Stardom in Kufo on that took place on May 25th and in Kyoto on the 26th. And then, of course, we cap up our reviews with PPP Tokyo with a Fantastic Phantom and a Dreamlike Night. This took place recently also. So we're going to be reviewing everything from start to finish. And then, of course, we cap up our episode with some news updates to give you guys updates what's been happening in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events are happening, who's booked, what matches are set, and, of course, some developments. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos. We talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news update to keep you guys on alert if something has happened in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed asap we also do the unagi sayaka watch and various other cool things as well so if you like what you see please subscribe to us or click on that subscribe button you'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool wrestling content as well but if you like this episode please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below now, all introductions have set aside. I believe that this get this show on the road. So let's begin with the Hanakamura Memorial Show. Okay, the Hanakamura Memorial produced Teremi Sakashi, I uh, don't know what that means, but as you know, every year they always have something that they put into the show. I mean, if you guys remember the first one, Matane, which means see you soon, that was one of the most memorable ones. But this one, as you know, it's been nearly four years since Hanakamura left this earth due to some circumstances. But as I said before, her her memories will always live in our hearts and in our memories as long as we will remember her. Now, of course, the show opened up with Kyoko Kimura, her, uh, Hana's mother, you know, giving a promo to the fans, addressing the matches and all this. But, of course, we had a surprise visit with Julia. Now, remember, she was initially supposed to participate in the main event, but due to the circumstances of the first show that took place with Mighty Gold, she got herself injured and this and that. However, those who remember... Julia was, in fact, Hana Komoria's last rival before her untimely passing. And I'm sure many of you will feel like this is a bit of a closure thing that it deserves to have. And, of course, it did. And then, of course, we have veteran Jaguar Yokota, who just 
Yakuda, Yakuda, Yakuda actually showing up. I don't know what they were all saying in Japanese, but it's great that they decided to appear. Now, let's begin with our very first match. Now, this one is a very special match. We have Yuna from Sendai Girls facing off against Stardoms and our current future champion, Rina. Now, the significance of this match is simple. Those who know clearly about Rina, Rina was part of the Tokyo Cyber Squad with Hanan when she was still alive. Now, Rina, as you know, she kept a lot of her image of of Hana right after she passed away. So she was very close to her. But however, Yuna, Yuna on the other hand, she was in fact a fan of Hana Kimura. Her, her, she was the reason she became a pro wrestler. But what makes it so awesome is that Yuna showed up wearing a similar wrestling gear that she wore when she first debuted. And I thought it was a great touching thing, you know, like to tap in her inner Hana Kimura. And I think both Yuna and Rina did that because, as I said before, Rina was close to her. She was part of the Tokyo Cyber Squad before she passed away. And I think it showed a lot of meaning. But, however, I mean, you know, I can say she does have a bright future. But this match was important. But, how unfortunately, in this match, it was Rina who picked up the win by a submission. But, of course, Rina and Yuna embraced each other knowing that they're doing this for the late Hana Kimura. Now... Our next match, well, this one's a bit of a little battle royal called the Fluffy Bat Battle Royale. We have various people. Let me pull up the info on this one. This one, I think you, many of you may like. I know I had it somewhere, somewhere. Just give me a minute. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so we had many wrestlers that participated. We have QC Hanakamura, which is a cosplay of Hanakamura, portrayed by Sakura I uh, Hirora, who is not the first time she's done that, but she wore the outfit of the Tokyo Cyber Squad one. So, in case anybody asks, we have Banana Senga, don't know who she is. Cherry, I know who she is. Fuminura Abe, Hanako Nakamura, Laundry Muto, yes, I know him. Segio Tachibana, yep, I know who he is. We have Shota Ashino, Shotaro Ashino, Sukaza Fujimoto, uh, Sumoto, uh, Sumuru uh, Osugi, Yumiko Hora, and those are the ones that participate. Now, however, this is how the entire list goes who got eliminated out of the Battle Royale. Um, Landry Mudo was eliminated. Um, um, Sumoto Osugi got eliminated by Banana Senga. And then Banana Senga got eliminated by Hanako Nakamura. And then Seikyo Tachibana eliminates uh, Hanako Nakamori. And then he got eliminated himself. <laughs> it's really funny. Then, of course, we have Cherry and Tsukasa Fujimoto eliminate Fuminori Abe. And then, of course, Cosplay Hana eliminates Shotaro Shino. Then Cherry, then uh, Kaus, um, QC Hana and Fujimoto eliminates uh, Yumiko Hora. And then, of course, um, QC Hana Kimura eliminates Fujimoto, then Cherry. So basically, the cosplay of Hana Kimura won the match. So <laughs> I thought it was a real interesting moment, but it was fun. Now, our next match, we had a very interesting six person tag match. We have Mensuri Oyaji. Um, Shizao and Super Delphin versus Ram Kaicho, Jensi Shinazaki, and of course, Aja Kong. Now, of course, there was going to be some interesting moments in this match. Of course, Aja Kong, who's going to be throwing a back fist. But however, they decided to add a little twist to this match. Lucha Libre Tag Team Match. Now, those who know that type of style, you don't initially have to tag in. You just... You roll out and you one and another one jumps in. That's how it works back over there. But however, you probably would try to figure out how is this gonna win. Well, I can tell you, excuse me, that it was Aja Kong with a big elbow on the top corner that landed on Mensuri Oyaji, and she picked up the win for her team, which is not bad. Now, 
Next up, we have a hardcore tag team match. We have Dash Shizako and Yuko Miyamoto taking on Ryo Mizunami and Masato Tanaka. Now, I know that you probably would say, has Ryu Mizunami ever participated in hardcore matches? I would say no, but I would say, in my opinion, that watching this match, the, the factor goes to Dash and Miyamoto. The reason is, these guys have experienced it. I mean, ugh, excuse me. Miyamoto, deathmatch wrestler, Dash, hardcore queen. So, you probably put two and two together, but it was Miyamoto who put up a the win with the moonsault onto Mizu, Mizu, Mizunami, and just like that, it was completely over. Now, we have a three-way trios match. We have team number one. We have Def Yamasan, Mio Momono, and Suri taking on Shihiro Hashimoto, Miyuki Takase, and Mika Iwata. They take on Sayuri Unioi, Shuri, and Konami. Now, you probably can guess certain people involved in this match. You have Death Yamasan. Those who know, she used to be part of Tokyo Cyber Squad up with Hana Kimura at the t during her time in the living. Miyuki Takase actually met Sayuri in their, in their early days. And, of course, um, Konami and Sayuri Unioi, they do have a bit of history. Sayuri Unioi is good friends with Hana. And, of course... Um, Sayunui actually spoke highly of her and of course Konami who could forget just like Death Yamasan she was part of the Tokyo Cyber Squad so I thought the match was pretty good there was a moment where Mio Momono and Suri got in each other's faces and all this and that but however it was Mika Iwata who picked up the win with the driver onto Death Yamasan to pick up the win now our main event is of course we have Veni versus Utami Ayashida. Now, originally, we were supposed to have Julia in this match with Veni, but due to the circumstances of injury, she had to be pulled out. And, of course, the better suited candidate was Utami Ayashida. So, you would think this is going to be a strong match. I have to say, it did. But, however, Utami Ayashida, who is determined to prove why she should be the ace of Mighty Gold and show the world what she's made of, she picked up the one the win with the hijack bomb giving the win and then of course as always when it comes to Hana Kimura and you, you know the phrase of this um of the entire show called Terima Kashi everybody said it. it everybody from the entire roster but of course the person to say it last is none other than her mom Kyoko so I thought that was a beautiful way I mean the first one will always be something special for me, just watching it. But this one, as you know, will keep our me memories of Hanukkah alive. So I think that's uh, pretty much it. So I think we're done with this. So let's move on with Stardom in Kofu. Okay. Stardom in Kofu. Now, this took place recently on the 25th. And, of course, we're going to start from the very beginning. We have singles action. We have Sayaka Kurara taking on Lady C. Now, of course, we have talked about Kurara, how her spleers are flawless and all this and that. She is a very capable wrestler. And, of course, Tam Nakano has her eye on her. However, how she'll do with a giant like Lady C, don't forget, she is tall. I think she's 5'8", I believe. So you probably would think this is going to be a very difficult challenge for her. Maybe you're right. And of course, as always, the giant swing plays out. But unfortunately, Kurara did not survive this match when she got chokeslammed and pretty much ended like that. I'm sure she is going to learn a few things of this mistake with um, her match with um, Lady C. Hopefully it's figured out something. Because don't forget, her teammate, uh, other fellow rookie member in Cosmic Angels, Sakura actually had to deal with her. But we'll, hopefully she gets some tips from her. Now our next match, we have star members, uh, Saya Ida, Hanan, and Koguma taking on EXV, 
Hanako, Wakasukiyama, and Zena. So basically, you would think there's something significant to that. Now remember, Waka and Hanako not too long ago challenged for the new blood tag team titles against Hanan and Saeeda. Now you would think that they would try to pick up a win to ensure they would get another opportunity. They say they never gave up, but of course Hana is very much like her sister, but she doesn't like, how do I say, say try to say negative comments, but try to say, look, you already passed your, surpassed your three year limits. So basically Waka would probably not be involved, but Waka says determined. But unfortunately she did not get the pin or the win. It was of course Zena who did that when she pinned Hanan, which is very, very critical for two reasons. One, don't forget, Zena put her mouth with her, her money with her mouth is when she said she's going to be the one to win the Cinderella tournament. But in reality, she did not. But it was Hanan who did. So we'll see where that leads us from here on out. I'm sure that Han, this is a, a, a loss that Hanan's not going to forget. But I don't think the new blood tag team belts will be in play in this one. Now, our next match, we have a bit of a, a three-way tag match. We have Crazy Star, consistent of Suzuki and Mei Sita, versus a Cosmic Angel members, Yuna Mizumori and um, Natsupoi, versus God's Eye, Saki Kashima, and Shuri. Now, I'm sure many of you are happy to see this combination with Shuri and, and Kashima, because, of course, who could forget that it was Suri who saved Kashima last year from Oedo Tai. So that kind of puts it in a very interesting thing. But however, how will this play out? Because three ways are very complicated. But luckily, as you know, Kashima likes to take the advantage when, of course, uh, Shuri kicked uh, Mizumori out and completely pinned her. Uh, Kashima actually pinned her, and just like that, it was over. So basically, she did okay from there. Now, before our next match, we had a surprise visit from the current never open weight champion, the last dragon, Shingo Tagagi. Yes, he arrived. I did not anticipate that. It was very, very interesting to see Shingo be involved in this. I mean, I'm sure he would do commentary if given the opportunity over the, in, in stardom to see what they're made of. But Shingo being part of that, that being uh, appearing, it's kind of very interesting. Uh, but nonetheless, it was great to see him. Now our next match, we have the other members of God's Eye, consistent of Rana Yagami, Konami, and Ami Sudi. They take on Cosmic Angel members Aya Sakura, Tam Nakano, and our current white belt champion, Saru Inoue. So as you know, last time, uh, Sarinui did have a deal with Ami Sodi. I know Ami Sodi would love nothing more than have an other opportunity of the white belt. But that does leave, of course, um, Konami maybe making a chance for that. But that wasn't the case. But unfortunately, this match ended with Ami Sodi applying the blue thunder bomb onto Aya Sakura to pick up the win. So, yeah. And if you guys notice, all members of Cosmic Angels in their respective match have lost all matches in, in one night. So that plays out in a very different way, but that's a different story. But anyway, moving on. Oedo Tai, we have Tech Club, Momo Wananabe, and Natsuko Tora taking on Queen's Quest, My, uh, Miyu Amasaki, Azumi, and Saki Kush, and Saya Kamitani. Now, don't forget, Oedo Tai and Queen's Quest are two of the oldest rivals that dates back during the time of course um eo sky and kagetsu however their rivalry continues on and on and on for who knows how long but however as you know mama wananabe used to be a member herself until she turned benedict arnold on them and of course she would love nothing more to destroy queen's quest and that's when she did that on this particular match when she applied the peach sunrise on on saya kamitani now, however, I would highly doubt that this will play out because, as you know, Kamitani is the current high-speed champion. I highly doubt that Momo Wananabe want to have a, a title shot of a belt that she probably would say it has no significance for her because her only desire is the red belt. That is, has always been on her mind. But sooner or later, she'll probably come across it again. 
And I'm going to presume that she'll probably aim it at the next five-star Grand Prix. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, our main event, we have star members Momo Kogo, Azuki, and Mayu Iwatani taking on Starlight Kid and the co-leaders of EXV, Mina Shirakawa and Micah. Now, I did say this before, once before. I think that Mayu Iwatana is a bit selfish and naive in hoping to think that Starlight Kid will love nothing more to come back. Well, it turns out she wasn't the only one feeling that way, and it was, of course, Momokogo. She thought the same thing, too. I mean, she said she would love nothing more to see Starlight Kid come back and Tam Nakano, but it's never going to happen. I mean, that uh, that's the, you know, basic fact. But, of course, it was um, Micah who picked up the win for her team when she applied the Michinoku driver on Momo Wananabe to pick up the win. And, of course, I mean, Momo Kogo, but, of course, later in the post-match comment, Momo realized that she doesn't want her back anymore. So, basically, she had a, well, you can say a change of attitude on that. But, however, many people are now thinking, will Starlight Kid choose EXV? Now, keep in mind, Starlight Kid is currently independent. She will not make a decision just yet. So she will team up whoever from whatever except for Oedo Tai um, to see what her decision will be. But I'm sure Mina Shirakawa and Micah love nothing more than have Starlight Kid. But Starlight Kid has the right to decide. Tam Nakano said it herself that she has a right to de decide for herself. It's nobody's decision but her own. But we'll see what happens until then. But right now, we're done with this one with the stardom in Kofu. Let's do the other stardom show that took place the following day in Kyoto. In Kyoto. Excuse me. Okay. Stardom in Kyoto at the... Um, KBS Hall. Now, don't forget, this is also the hometown of Hanako and Miyu Amasaki. So, it's kind of interesting that these two, in fact, of course, will have their homecoming. But, unfortunately, Hanako, as you know, she opened up the event with her taking on Konami. Now, you would think that Konami, as a skillful wrestler that she is, not to mention her nickname known as the Submission uh, sniper, you would think that she will find a way to put someone like um, Hanako away to her sort of her size. I'm sure Hanako must have thought in her in her mind that because of her size, it would have been the deciding factor of her first win in her hometown in Kyoto. However, that wasn't it. Uh, Konami was the one who picked up the win when she applied a submission. So that played out very well on on Konami's part. But a very disappointing loss for Hanako. Now, our next match, we have Aya Sakura versus Tekla. Now, this entire of the match, Tekla has a new mission. To kill every idol wrestler. That includes people like, of course, Mina Shirakawa, Tam Nakano, Natsupoi, and including the Cosmic Angels themselves. However, she decided to go full-on blaze to Aya Sakura. Aya Sakura was completely helpless in this match she couldn't even apply her own moves but it was Tekla with her finisher that ended the deal by pinning um, Sakura but however in the post match she decided to take it a little too far and decided to punish even further Yutna Mizumori and uh, Sayaka Kara tried to help but it was no luck but it was the leader herself Tam Nakano who confronted Tekla for what she did but on also on the flip side of this whole mess, Tekla decided once again to attack uh, Sakura to make her point across. So I feel bad for Aya Sakura because she has never been, I don't think she's ever been in this type of punishment. I'm sure that she will want to get revenge with her. But if I was her, I would keep my distance from her for the time being until you figure something out. Now, our next match, we had a very interesting tag match. Zuzu team up with the members of Queen's Quest, consistent of Lady C and Azumi, taking on the members of God's Eye, consistent of Rana Yagami, Amisuri, and Shuri. 
So you would think that this is going to be a really interesting one. However, uh, it was, of course, um, Shooty with a buzzsaw kick to Lady C to pick up the win. But one thing that led to another, Azumi and Zuzu decided to duke it out outside the ring. I think they're playing the blame game. Who is at fault here? But it's no one's fault, but things just happen. So, <laughs> so yeah. Now, our next match, we had a bit of a three-way tag match. We have star members Momokoko and Hanan uh, versus Cosmic Angels Sayaka Kurara and Tam Nakano versus Starlight Kid and Mina Shirakawa. Now, keep in mind, Mina Shirakawa is very persuasive. She'll try, she'll try to definitely convince Starlight Kid to join, but Starlight Kid feels, I need to team up with the others. She feels that everything she has done so far is not complete. So, basically, she'll make her decision eventually. But, however, in this match, it was Starlight Kid who picked up the win with the Black Tiger Leg Killer onto Sayaka Kurara and pick up the win. So, however, I like to say that Kurara has a great fighting spirit. Even Starlight Kid noticed it too on, on X because she called her the enemy of my... She's the enemy. So, basically, I think Starlight Kid likes what she sees in her. Just like Tam does. I mean, people often say she'd probably be better off with Cosmic Angels. I mean, I would say so too because I would think that maybe this is... She would join because Tam was the one who stepped up to help her after Oda Tai turned her back. They turned their backs on her, but we'll see what Tom would tell until she makes her decision. But right now, let's keep on moving forward. Now, our next match we have a three-way match: Saya Ida, Mei Sita, and Saki Kashima. Now, of course, don't forget these women have something in common in some capacity. Saya Ida recently challenged for the high-speed belt. Uh, came up short. May sit a former champion, and so is Saki Kashima. But however, you know Saki Kashima would try to play a little bit of her tricks in ways, but it did not work this time because it was May uh, Sita who picked up the win with, of course, um, with um, with the Rolling Star onto Kashima. So, however, we will see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have a three-way trios match. We have Cosmic Angel members Yuna Mizumori, Natsupoi, and Sayuri Nui versus star members Koguma, Azuki, and Mayu Utani versus EXV, Waka, Tsukiyama, Sina, and Maika. Now, this is going to be a difficult match to actually see. Uh, there's a lot of factors that could play it out on this one. I mean, here's the thing. We, anybody could pin Sayurinoe and get an opportunity of the white belts. Anybody could pin, of course, Koguma and Azuki and Mayu. They're champions. And, and I mean, Koguma and Azuki are the current tag champions. And Mayu, the IWGP women's champion. And, of course, don't forget, EXV members, Zena and Micah are the two-thirds of the artist champions. While Micah is the current red belt champion. So there's a lot of ways someone could pick up a win. But, unfortunately... That match did not play it out that well. It was, of course, um, Zeno with the Thunderstruck on that Supoi to pick up the win. But, of course, something has just happened. Sayurinoi has been teasing that she wants to give Azuki a shot of the white belt. But, apparently, someone wants it. And that is, of course, Zena. Zena wants to collect more belts because they want to prove the EXV is now the best in the world. Best faction in the world. But, we'll see. I mean, right now... There's those that may be thinking that Sarino could lose the belt to Natsupoi, but only time will tell until that day happens. But we will see until then. Now, our main event features Oedo Tai members Momo Wananabe and Natsuko Tora taking on um, Queen's Quest Miyuma Saki and Sayaka Mitani. Now, don't forget, of course, Amasaki is a homegrown girl, from, is a home, the hometown girl in Kyoto. So that kind of puts it in a good perspective. But however, don't forget, as I said before, Odotai and Queen's Quest are two of the oldest factions. They hate each other, and they will do whatever it takes to destroy each other. But it was, of course, Kamitani who, who defeated her former mentor, Ma Momo Wananabe, with the Frankensteiner. And just like that, it was over. However, this is the most interesting thing that happened. Now, those who know this, Queen's Quest, ever since Utami Ayashida 
have left to join Mighty Gold, um, they want to expand their, their membership. But Kamitani, I think she is a bit more foolish. She extended, she was loved nothing more to see Momo want an obit to rejoin. But I think Momo has like, I'm done with Queen's Quest. You know, I had the weight in my shoulder. I mean, the one thing that was hard for her is that she did not, she couldn't uh, think about it, guys. Momo took over as the leader after Eo Sky left. So, but Azumi is not okay with the idea. And I understand it, but those who don't, let me explain about that part. M Momo was the one who whacked Azumi with the chair almost three uh, three years ago. And I don't think Azumi hasn't forgotten about it. I think Kamitani is just like Mayu, thinking that if Mayu thinks that she could bring Star uh, Starlight Kid back to stars, why not Momo Wananabe? And I think that's a bit naive and selfish of her to think that way. But I think Azumi is like, I don't think she would want to come back. Just like everybody else in Stars feel about Starlight Kid. But we'll see what happens until then. But as of right now, we are done now with star Stardom. Let's move on with our last review. And that is, of course, PPP Tokyo. Okay, our last review, PPP Tokyo. Uh, it's been, what, a couple of months since I reviewed one of these shows? Um, if you probably ask me, J-Rod, how can we watch this? Uh, easy, go on their YouTube channel, but follow them on their social media, mostly on their X account. Uh, reason is they'll normally will announce their events. Normally, they don't, they're not like a promotion that do events every once a month. It'll take them a few months because everybody, uh, not a lot of the wrestlers are in fact wrestling in the, uh, they're not actually like kind of say wrestling all the time in the same promotion. They're wrestling out in other locations and not to mention certain wrestlers work outside of wrestling. And you know, one of them I mentioned before, Chanyota, but that conversation I've already mentioned. If you guys haven't seen that, uh, you can look in my discussion videos uh, from what? Maybe a year or two ago, I talk about her, and we'll see. But our first match, let's begin from there. We have Joji Otani taking on uh, Shota. Now, remember, if you guys remember Shota, he is no longer part of Gambari Pro due to the new management. Um, he is now going freelancing from here on out. But, however, I was like okay with the idea of this match, knowing, um, well thing is this Shota he is like a kind of like a disciple of Eddie Guerrero but however you look at Otani who is the one of the regular roster members of this promotion I had a feeling he was going to pick up the win but he applied a move that Shota probably he applied himself to and also his late hero Eddie Guerrero the frog slash so that ended right there for him now, our next match, we have a very interesting Yoshi match. We have the re-debut of, um, what's her name? Drake and Marika Kobashi. Now, these two ladies know each other completely. But first, let me introduce their opponents. We have Nagisa Nozaki and Ryuzunami. Now, why do I call the um, Drake as a re-debut? Simple. Those who have been following my news updates... Uh, Drake, she is the latest signee with PPP Tokyo. She's been, uh, she is one of the, um, she's been with Tokyo Shi Pro Wrestling and she retired about, left or graduated in 2017. However, she does have a close connection to Marika Kobashi. As you remember, Kobashi herself used to be with Tokyo Shi Pro Wrestling until she graduated from the promotion herself. So that uh, plays out pretty well. But in this case, um, in this case, it's a very interesting team up. But unfortunately, uh, things did not go well for, of course, Drag K because she ended up being, um, what was it? She, in the Boston Crab by Re Mizunami. So basically, it's like <coughs> reintroducing a rookie who hasn't been wrestling for a long time. So basically, that's how. 
<sighs> oh, excuse me. That happened. Our next match, we have a very interesting tag match. We have um, Kentaro Hashizu and Masato Tanaka. They team up to take on Yumihiro Inamari and Koji Doi. I thought this match was hard hitting, very strong. I mean, Hashizu, um, Hashizu, Hashizu, he's a very strong, capable wrestler. But I was so impressed with his skills, how much he has learned. Now, he hasn't been wrestling that long. He's just like Chanyota. But he was able to pick up the win when he applied a crucifix onto Koji Doi. Uh, that was very impressive on his part. I'm not going to lie about that. Now, our next match, we have a very interesting six, uh, per, uh, six women's tag match. Uh, we have Kaho Kobayashi, Zones, and Chanyota versus Riara, Veni, and Natsu Surime. Now, what I like about this match is simple. You look at Kaho Kobayashi, Zones, and Chanyota. These ladies like to flex out their muscles. Nothing wrong about that, but they all live in that same kind of atmosphere. I thought that's a good team up between them. They ought to call themselves the Muscle Girls or something. I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there, guys. Don't quote me on that anyway. But you look at Riara, Veni, and Natsu Tsunami. They're almost similar alike. But I know that uh, recently, um, Natsu, Natsu Tsunami actually um, teamed up with Riara before in the past. And, of course, Riara learned a lot from her. But it was a very impressive match. Uh, I have to say it was great that Chanyota picked up the win when she applied a brain buster on Turiara in giving the win. Now, our main event features, of course, Kabuto uh, Mitomi, the boss of PP Tokyo, take on Soi Daimonji. I was so, like, I can't believe that Mitomi was losing to this guy. He was doing everything to brutalize Mitomi. I mean... Wow. But in the end, it was, of course, a big lariat to the back of the head by Daimoji to pick to defeat, of course, the boss of PPV Tokyo. But damn, just like that, it was completely over. So we'll see what happens down the line with these guys. But as of right now, let's just end things right now with all the reviews at this point. Move on with our last and final thing, news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news update. So let's begin with the promotion themselves. We got a big thing going on in that section of our news updates. Uh, as you know, on May 30th, Got to Move will have their next show called Apple Ambitions, which is the sixth anniversary of May Shruga. So this will take place in Shinkiba. Now, this will be released in YouTube, but it will be released at another later time, maybe a week or two, depending on who's doing the editing, in my opinion. But we do know what matches will be taking, so these is the full card of that particular day. We have Mia Yatsuba, she takes on Veni. That's going to be a very interesting match. Uh, we have, of course, um, Hiroyi and making her official debut. Uh, she teams up with the much recent rookie, Eri Kanai, uh, taking on Nonaka Seto and Mochi Natsumi. That's an interesting combination because if you guys know this, Mochi Natsumi took in Nonaka's sister, Miya, under her wing. So I'm kind of curious about that, just to be honest with you guys from that. Uh, we do have an interesting uh, ta tag match. We have Sayaka uh, Obihiro teams up with Chiko Shikawa. She takes on Kurumi Hiragi and uh, Sawadi Kamen. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we have an eight-person tag match. We have, um, what's her name? Chris Brooks, Antiona Honda, uh, Mecha Mami, and Sayaka, who are dubbing themselves as the roster from Bakagaijin. So if you guys know this, they're putting that. But however, you have Shonchiu, uh, Shinki, 
Toki Chan and Inbound, they will be teaming up together. And then finally, I believe this is going to be our main event. The Asian Dream Tag Team belt will be defended. As you know, Mei Shuga is one half of the Asian Dream Tag Team Champions with her best bro, Balinaki. They take on Emi Sakura's mentor, Emi Sakura, and of course, the much slicker and clever individual, Masahiro Takanashi. Now, uh, this coming Saturday, as you know, we have the Mighty Gold Show in Osaka, and they just put out the full card of that event. Let me pull that up for everyone. Ah, here it is. So this is the full card from what I'm hearing. Um, we have Utame, Ayashida, and Mirai. They will team up to take on uh, Miku um, Ano and Mai Sakurai. Then we have Natsumi Shizuki and Misa Matsui taking on Bozilla and Mila Grace. Then we and then our remaining matches we have singles matches. We have Zeta Steel versus Nagisa Nozaki. Then we have Chika Goto versus Victoria uh, Yuzuki. And then we have Nanane Takahashi versus uh, Chiaki. Now, however, there was a note that was posted on this. Uh, Kyoki Amoy, uh, Amari will be missing these shows due to outside conflicts. Now, this is not conflicts of, you know, some, this is more like they're doing things outside of the of Mighty Gold. I don't know exactly. But, however, it's also foretold that now Ishikawa will be missing out. I will explain more of that later in a little bit. Now, uh, Black Label Pro has announced for their family reunion show taking place on the 7th of June. Jordan Oliver will be in action to take on Rico Gonzalez. Then, of course, on the 8th of June... As you know, House of Glory will have a very special produced event made by none other than Mike Santana called the Puerto Rico Rican. And it was announced that uh, Carlos Colon, you may know him as the father of Carlito, he'll be making his appearance there. So yeah, so Papa Carlito will be making his way to this. It's great that he's going to be there. Um, then, of course, then on the 16th of June, Deadlock Pro Wrestling announced for their live six show that, that will take place. The West Coast Pro Championship will be defended. Kevin Blackwood defends his belt against Andrew Everett. Then, of course, we have a uh, wrestling revolver with the Cage of Horrors that takes place on the 22nd of J June. The Revolver World Tag Team belt will be defended. The current champions, Sar um, Samurai Del Sol and Lince Dorada defend their belt against uh, Davy Bang and August Matthews. Now, another match that was announced uh, recently for the CML Lady Rings and Lucha F Fiesta number no. 2 that will take place in Japan, most specifically in Shinkiba, Amapola will be in action to take on Momokogo. Yes, folks, Momokogo will be appearing in this one. But those who don't know, Momokogo did a tour with CML a few years ago. This is prior before she made her way to stardom. And then, of course, a French promotion, um, ACP, has announced for their upcoming event on June 30th called Clash of Gold. Former WWE uh, star Shelton Benjamin will be there. That's right, guys. There is a French promotion. I've seen it. I saw the match with Mustafa Ali in it. And then, of course, and then when we moved on in August, it was announced that uh, Oceani, um, Oceani, um, Oceani, oh, hopefully I pronounced it right, Pro Wrestling has announced that Lady Flamer from AAA will be making her long awaited appearance in this one. Uh, GCW has announced that they will be making their return to Japan and they will have a tour there between August 12th to the 14th. And DDT, and DDT will be involved in this. And then finally, this one, I think I, I love to mention this. If I do have any subscribers uh, here from San Diego, you should know that the uh, Bay Area promotion, West Coast Pro will be here on um, in September uh, during Twitch cons. Now, details of that will be announced. I am de definitely want to go see this, but I need to know how to get to there. But once I get that information... So this is for all my subscribers in San Diego. If you guys know about this, now you know. So I'm excited. Now let's move on with our last and final part of the entirety of the 
of news updates. Um, if you guys remember, I'm doing the Julia report. As you know, she was injured on uh, on the day of the Mighty Gold debut show. Uh, it was now foretold that she had a very successful surgery. Um, so basically, everything went well for her. Uh, she will be discharged from the hospital this coming Thursday. However, due to the injury, she will not be participating in any wrestling match. However, she will be accompanying Mighty Gold during their um, regional shows uh, starting on June 1st. So basically, she will be at Mighty Gold, but not participating in any matches, which is a bummer. However, speaking of Mighty Gold, as you know, now Shikawa also got injured. She injured herself in the in the, in the left knee during a match in Shinkiba. Um, as a precaution, she has to miss out this weekend on in Osaka and um, Hamamatsu. So basically, they uh, are not taking any chances with her. So it's a smart move from them. So we'll see what happens until then. Uh, now, also, they were announced that in Mighty Gold. The four trainees will be making their debut in Corken Hall on June 11th. Uh, we have um, Komomo Minami, who you may know. She was the third person who was supposed to debut with Hanako and Aya Sakura. Well, she'll be finally making her long-awaited debut. Uh, she'll have Ryuko Sakimu Sakimura, Yuko Minami, and of course Nagisa Tachibani. So all four of these ladies will make their debuts. So uh, don't know exactly what matches that will happen. But this will be on the 11th of June in Cork and Hall. So mark that to your calendars. I know I will. But <laughs> that's pretty much it what we have for that. So I think we're done with everything with all the reviews and our news updates. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. We have more with new japan pro wrestling as you know we continue with the best of the super juniors however uh, we're getting closer and closer towards the end and we're going to focus only i believe on the a block matches i believe or b block i don't know one of the blocks on this particular one so i'm excited and of course we have nxt now i'm also considering maybe reviewing the much recent shows from Mighty Gold that took place in Shinkiba, the afternoon show and the evening show. So there's still talks about that. So we'll see where that leads us. But if I do have any time, I'll do another one if it's a possibility due to the fact that I mentioned about New Japan Pro Wrestling. But only time will tell. We'll just wait and see when we get there. But as of right now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time, same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day.